questioning my sanity a little bit. Leaving in the dark. Nobody else here in the rain. Well, this is ironic as I've walked up the hill, nothing other than a lovely tan coloured Hilleberg Sulu. Does look nice. So I've just been chatting to a nice guy called Chris in there. He's tucked in amongst the rocks. But my objective is to uh, try and get over in the wind as much as possible, or within reason anyway. that's the low pitch now let's just uh, build it up from here the good news is this ground's really solid so these pegs are going nowhere okay I'm really happy with that now it looks uh it looks really quiet, does the tent. I don't know if you can hear me all right, hope you can. The wind's not ridiculous, about 20 just now. But we've got no flappage there, looks good. But the only thing that concerns me a tiny bit on this windward side is this uh, wind catching under this flap here. Uh -huh. So if it does rain heavy, which is forecast, I'll have to see what happens with that. But anyway, I'm going to get my stuff in. So I'm a little bit damp, so this would be an opportunity to clip this vest veal back and I could make more space and I could get inside here and I'd have space to take my waterproofs off. Here goes the rain and I've elected not to seam seal this tent to see what happens and it's forecast super heavy rain and gusting 48 mile an hour 49 actually and I've gotten myself in as exposed spot as I can so what I did before I came out is I pre-attached the footprint and that worked really well so this is when it starts eh so I did a bit of prep beforehand so I decided to uh, take the poles and pegs apart and I got it into a nice little ball that uh, weighed I think 2.1 kilos and measured uh, 23 centimeters around and that was just like a, a small to medium sleeping bag sort of size that I could just shove my pack and put the poles and pegs down the uh, down the sides nice and easy went up pretty quick this first time in the in the in the raw in the wild uh, the only thing that slowed me down a little bit is I'd left the the guy lines uh, still factory tied and uh, that took a little bit of uh, time just kind of like unraveling those because they had them in really really tight little kind of like coils so yeah that slowed me down a little bit but hey it's done now this is the first night on the Thermarest Xtherm NXT you can feel the, the nice warmth and I haven't bothered bringing my usual little foil blanket I do uh, I normally bring because it's uh, 
covering all the bottom of the tent. And since it's so late, unfortunately, I haven't bought Honey Dog. Well, she doesn't like the rain that much, and it would have been walking up in the rain, a kind of stormy night in the tent, and walking back down in the morning. So she's had two good walks today. So sorry, no Honey Dog. I miss her too, but uh, yeah, she's be tucked up at home. She'll be absolutely fine there. about 30 miles an hour now, just measured it there, 31.5 in there, tent's pretty calm actually, I stuck my nose out to check because uh, I could hear it howling outside and I thought well not much going on in here, I think I better check. I think uh, the uh, outer's getting a bit depressed, that side, where the wind's coming from, but otherwise no drama. So 30, sounds like it's getting a bit stronger now, but uh, yeah, absolutely fine and dandy. Got a new stove to try out, which is the real deal MSR Duo. Should be nice to get a bit of warmth in here in a second. Really stable that. And I tell you what I've done, what I've seen loads of people do on films is uh, forgot a spoon. So I've had my dinner before I left home, but I've got some uh, little uh, fudge bites and custard, so and no spoon. I'm gonna have to fashion one out of something or improvise or just drink the custard I think. I'll tell you what I have got though. Some 10 year old Isle of Jura single malt does not require a spoon. <laughs> Cheers Nortent. That's well pretty quick. This is uh, a bit over the top, this stove for in here tonight. You know, I could have got away with something smaller, but I just wanted to try it out and it's uh, a nice stable unit as well. It's just what you want. And you know, I'm a fan of the remote canister stoves and this is a remote canister stove that also has got, as you can see on the bottom there, a heat exchanger. So I'm going to be doing a big test of this later versus the uh, Phi Maple Mars. So keep an eye out for that on my stove playlist. Uh, a cup of tea. Cool. It's still pretty good though. Dip. Mm. Well, Honey is here in spirit. That's one of her hairs there, on it. Put that next to my sleeping bag. But what could be a better, Ray? Eh? On a remote Northumberland hillside, dipping caramel mini cakes in sloppy custard, cup of tea brewing. All cosy in the tent. And then a bit of whiskey to follow. Couldn't be any better. I'm glad I came. I'm glad you're watching. Right, I'm putting a big jacket on. Going out for a guy line check. All seems fine. Good, I've tightened things up a little bit and it's uh, standing super snug there. It's absolutely fine and dandy. No flapping at all.
Okay, time to batten down the hatches in here and get warm. That's enough of that guy checking malarkey. But yeah, it seems all fine. I bought two or three extra pegs with me, but I could still do with one or two more. So yeah, note to self. All manufacturers are little buggers really, aren't they? Kind of like not quite giving you enough pegs. I don't know why. Uh, I know some are worse than others. This tent is just three or four short. Maybe it's a weight saving thing. But absolutely loving this door quick tie back thing. That's super convenient. That. Just... Hook that on the pole and uh, pretty secure, not going anywhere. I'm impressed with this thermarest so far. It's just so lovely and warm. Even though it's a relatively warm night, the ground will still be cold. And you know, I've heard that oh, it's nowhere near as comfortable as the Sea to Summit ones, but it seems absolutely fine to me. And you know, your girlfriend's hands might be nice and soft, but if they're freezing cold when she shoves them up your shirt, that's not comfortable, is it? And that's how I've been on the Sea to Summit, just uh, cold on it when the ground's kind of like pretty cold and this is going to be a lot more comfy just because it's warm now this was sent to me by uh, Firmares by Cascade and I wanted to thank them for that but you know full disclosure I'm uh, just going through a series of tests with it just to make my own mind up about it really and uh, I'll be doing more in the future I think I might let it down a little bit just so I sink in a little bit more but uh, yeah so far it's uh, absolutely great good morning boys and girls it's half past six I've had a nice night you know, but the tent's been solid it's uh, shifted more to the west northwest the wind across that way it's coming at this side of I was just reading this about luxuries at Everest Base Camp. Individual tents with furniture and ensuite bathrooms, huge lounge domes, bakeries, and massage parlors with helicopters going up and down constantly. Softy Everest climbers, they want to come up here in Northumberland on a windy hilltop. <laughs> A little bit of condensation here, but there's been definitely no water ingress of any sort. And I've had driving rain at times last night, showers really, and then all night kind of like nizzle and spray coming across and it's completely dry. But the MSR Duo in a, this confined space feels a bit safer because of the slight lack of uh, big roaring flame. That's coming through now, but I thought settle down to that glow on the top. Bit of warmth. No, I like it. Nice and simple. I'm looking forward to trying the, the bigger pot. Ooh, a bit of burning grass on there. So we can actually cook proper food in it. So like last night, I had to make my custard into liquid so I could drink it. I'm gonna have to do the same again with my raisin porridge. But hey, no Everest base camp luxuries here. I haven't even got spoons. <laughs> To be honest, I think I'd be happy to put that on the footprint because there's no heat coming down here. It's all contained in there, you know. There's a lot of strong wind coming from the side here, but I don't see the outer touching the inner at all. If I push like that, 
that'll put it together. But when the wind's blowing, they're not touching. They seem to move in unison, really, which is nice. I had a big uh, mounted hardware Trango 3, and that was terrible for that, the inner sticking to the outer. So far, this seems to be completely free of that problem. shifted in the night more to a northwesterly direction so this wind of between 20 and 30 miles an hour at the moment is coming directly pretty much side on at the tent and you can see the uh, the stress points here but it's uh, absolutely fine would have been better if I'd had another peg for that bit there actually See, Chris and his Sulu is still there. It was a leap of faith coming out last night in the new Vern 1 because I haven't seen any kind of uh, online wind tests or, or anything. Now, no tent would have done thorough testing, but you've got to see it with your own eyes, haven't you? And I've been impressed last night, despite not being seam sealed, there's not a and heavy rain, there's not a drop of water come in. It's been comfortable. It's been relatively low flap. Uh, the framework or the poles have not moved an inch and that's with a, a side wind of over 30 mile an hour i measured it at 31.5 but it definitely gusted higher than that but you know i've got better things to do than stand out all night with an anemometer waiting for that gust you know especially when they're infrequent but it's been kind of like all night steady between i would say uh high teens to 25 varying between that and then higher gusts and it's held uh, steady and I know that's not the be all and end all in winds but certainly with that first test and in these conditions it's been absolutely fine and I am going to seam seal it it's a it's a quick easy job it's no hassle to me and North Tent have said it's optional but I've seen and spoke to friends who got plenty of high-end tents, mentioning no names, that definitely have needed to seam seal because of seam leakage. This hasn't happened in this tent and it hasn't happened in any of my other Nord tents, but I'm still going to do it as a, an easy thing to do, belts and braces, peace of mind. So it's up to you really, but you know, if you don't want to seam seal it, it's been fine up to now. It's been relatively easy just to drop it down from the top to this low point here. I've still got one guy lying in. Should tie it to the rucksack really, but it'll be fine. Now it's just a case of taking the poles out and wrapping it up. this video consider clicking on the buy me a coffee link but what you'll be doing is not buying me a coffee I've got plenty of coffee and you'll not be buying me gear I've got plenty of gear and uh, you'll not be supporting the channel because I'm fine 
what you'll be doing is helping me to raise funds to buy gear for my local scout unit where I'm an assistant leader. So we've bought gear for them before and uh, what we're trying to raise funds for is to get some new tents really, especially some of the bigger shelters, this old, cheap, floppy, worn out polyester things. So think about clicking on that if you've enjoyed this. Like I said, it's not for me. So that's been a great first night at the 2024 Vern 1. It was uh, drama free really in the strong winds. The pitching method from the ground up worked really well. All the components were absolutely fine. I was warm, dry and cozy on this February night in the Northumberland Hills and I'm in an area to the south of uh, Cheviot Mountain. It's a bleak remote area but fabulous for wild camping. So thanks very much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.